Hey guys, today I'm just gonna do a quick case, hopefully a quick one. Uh, this is a ADATA micro SD card, but I also wanted to uh, demonstrate um, a tool I just um, got in the mail some time ago. I haven't really been able to test it all that much, but uh, it's a it's a simple solution for a very common problem. A uh, very common problem being uh, needing to access the NIN protocol as quickly as possible. Um, there are multiple ways how NAND protocol can be accessed and how that uh, connection could be established. But um, for the most part, it requires some wiring. Uh, we've done this before many, many times on this channel. If you're interested in uh, checking how that is done, uh, you can check the playlist for uh, memory card recovery on this channel and there's tons of stuff uh, regarding that subject. Uh, there are some signals on the back of this card uh, that uh, allow us to communicate with the content of the NAND using the NAND protocol. Um, but uh, to sit down and wire this card up, we're probably looking about 15 minutes uh, to get that done. If uh, you know, if you're good with the with the iron, and it's a schematic that is uh, not too complex. Uh, this tool that I got in the mail will make things a lot a lot easier for us and much much faster basically it's a breakout uh, socket the beauty of this is that it's not designed to be used only with one set of tools it's designed to use any tool you want you can use fe you can use pc3000 you can use vnr all of this uh, has its own interface so uh, the interface for uh, pc3000 is right here interface for fe is on the back and we have these standoff headers uh, for vnr uh, that could be also used but they require mounting some of the headers that are supplied with the kit uh, looking at this uh, design um i can tell that uh, you know it's pretty pretty basic pretty standard uh, we have uh, these um, Pogo pins make instant connection with uh, test points on the device and they're in corresponding positions where they need to be uh, to communicate with the card. The card would be going in like this. And then we have this T-shaped uh, cover that slides over, applies pressure to the card to um, make that contact few things that we need to do as a prep obviously we need to strip the back of this card to expose it this little basket does amazing work at keeping the bristles um, in uh, the tray this is the tool I use for uh, clearing it up we're just gonna brush it up I know that this is a SanDisk uh, pinout so I know exact location where this needs to be scrubbed but um, if we didn't you'd kind of just you know try to expose it as much as you can That's pretty much all we needed to do. Now we have this uh, unit, if you can see in a scope view, that is uh, stripped out and ready for positioning. Just place it in the bracket. Now this uh, T-shaped handle goes in and it's going to slide over the device like this to keep it in place. That's it. That's all. Slide it into multi-board adapter and plug in the device to PC3000. I just opened up a task for it and uh, we're going to go read ID on the chip. Instantly we get the ID of the device and we can begin reading it. So. That's all it really took uh, for connecting um, a micro SD card to an end protocol and getting into read. So two hours, three hours almost uh, later, we should have a extracted dump that we can begin uh, error correcting and starting to work with. So this is what the final result looks like once the dump is extracted. And uh, the first step of the process would be to uh, define ECC and um, tool does amazing job at uh, finding those ranges for us automatically once the ecc is uh, been selected 
uh, we're gonna run this process sometimes this process will require multiple passes uh, sometimes we get very clean read right off the get-go but usually there is some follow-up readouts that we need to do in most cases because usually that's how uh, problematic uh, devices start to fail in the first place they develop these bit errors uh, controllers can't handle them and uh, as a result nothing loads so now uh, first step for saying these devices eliminate XOR uh, there's only two of them for us luckily we can test them both to see which one works better if uh, we're not getting desired results uh, so at this point we need to uh, describe our sector parameters and um, knowing uh, these devices we know that our ECC range uh, is uh, uh, had been shown for us here, if we go into ECC, view information about the ECC, um, it gives us the values. So there are four ranges. We're just going to pull up the calculator, type them in here, multiply that by four. That's the length of the ranges that we're working with. And our page currently is a little longer than that. So we need to cut some of that extra fat off the device. And uh, we do that through this operation. We enter it here. Now we just divide these by four because we're working with four parts and uh, with Sandus devices this is not something that like I mean I, I can explain easily but this is just the parameters basic settings and they stay pretty much consistent for Sandisk is the first 14 bytes goes towards uh, a marker uh, and then uh, there is four parts of data 512 each so it's 2048 in total so to do that uh, we're gonna divide uh, them by four and that's how we will uh, add our data parts to the sector when they're in four like that and then we're gonna add our markers and that's pretty much all we need to do to describe the sector so at this point we can just go ahead and apply these settings and that will add another element to our transformation graph which is page transformation element now that our page had been transformed we can actually start uh, seeing what kind of uh, data there would be we can even run raw recovery right now but chances are there is some sort of interleave involved and to check it we can split the element by the block and compare the service areas if they look very similar to each other there is an interleave so we're going to eliminate it by adding another element which is unite by uh, pages join by pages unite by pages um, that gives us an element that joins these two parts together and uh, if we run raw recovery for example we can see if we're getting on the right path or not sometimes there's going to be more than just one interleave involved and uh, most likely it is the case here also knowing how um, mixed up these cards can get so we're going to eliminate uh, uh, these um, by running uh, raw recovery and, and seeing what kind of results we get so far, um, I'm not seeing too many JPEGs. J JPEG is just the easiest thing to test the, the device with because they're big enough uh, to uh, include several blocks there. And if they don't work, that means there's other parts of the mix involved. So we're gonna add another uh, split by the block, compare it and see if uh, this split by the block element has similar um, features and we can see that they do. So we're gonna join this part by pages as well. And uh, let's just add one more uh, split by block element and compare that just just to see if we need to go further or if uh, we can just simply delete it if it's not needed. If they look different, we don't need to keep it in there. We're just going to delete that last element. And uh, yeah, I can see that they're different. So let's go back and delete this because we're not going to need this element in here and run uh, raw recovery on our final element which was uh, this join by pages element uh, run raw recovery we can see that it's pulling up some stuff and um, if we look at this element this file, this file is, is broken but that could be due to um, improper mix um, improper XOR or it could be that we still have uh, too many bit errors in the pro in the project, and um, we still need to keep going with our error correction readout. So let this uh, run for a bit, and we're gonna test a second XOR also to see um, what changes that will bring, because that may bring um, 
quite a bit of difference if we have incorrect incorrect XOR picked out right now. We see some images are opening up and this is a fairly big one. So the first option uh, for XOR I picked was probably not matching well uh, and as a result we were getting a lot of uh, damages. Uh, so right now you can see that the extraction is running um, way more stable and a lot more images are showing up green. Uh, if we were to explore it I see that even without really looking into it all that much I can see that the results are coming out pretty good and most likely a lot of it will be uh, functional if we go in like this is a picture that's been taken with the camera and this picture shows up as 6.7 megabytes so it's definitely uh, a good mix so this is it guys for now uh, the case would be considered to be done we may have to run a few more uh, ECC passes a few more readouts just to get um, the number of bad pages down as much as we can uh, to improve the results uh, on recovered pictures we don't need to build an image using an assembler uh, for using a, like a translator or a block sequence at this point because uh, even with the mix that we already assigned uh, getting pictures out is going to be good enough uh, getting them through raw um, recovery because camera doesn't really create any uh, you know crazy structures and subfolders and stuff like that that need to be brought back uh, files inside of the camera usually are named with a sequence that camera assigns to it so who cares whether we get them with our own sequence or the camera sequence file names are file names but um, as far as the results go I think th this card is going to be fully recovered if not fully it's going to be very 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 close to the uh, original condition and the customer will be happy thank you very much for following me and I'll see you all in the next episode cheers